Hey everybody, today we're gonna be cracking open the history of energy drinks. Now I'm trying something new with this video. I have this weird like thing where my, my rig is animated to my voice and everything, so bear with me on this. Now everyone's seen a can of liquid caffeine, and if you've ever been around me, then you've probably seen me with at least two in each hand at all times, like an energy octopus. Now the history of energy drinks is just as convoluted and filled with misconceptions as my brain is filled with caffeine, so buckle up, shotgun that monster, and take a 3 a.m. Red Bull filled gaming session ramble with me as we go down the energy drink rabbit hole. Many energy drinks that we know of today didn't get their start to the late 80s, early 90s, but the history of them can be traced all the way back to the 1900s with coca- I mean, <clears throat> Coca-Cola. Pepsi and Coke are, were both marketed as energy boosters when they first came into America due to their, at the time, high caffeine content, due to being made from, well, Okay. In fact, there was a lawsuit against Coke at the time to reduce the caffeine in its soda because allegedly, in quotes, that it was harmful. Yep, all 117 milligrams caffeine. That's like a cup of Folgers coffee now. Anyway, skipping ahead a few decades, uh, somewhere in the shithole that is Europe, a company named Lisa Company, how creative, introduced Red Bull to the tea drinking and baguette eating commoners of the land. Shortly after Red Bull was brought overseas into the great US of Ole, and with the hustle culture, TikTok guru people of the 2000s drinking this stuff up. I can't imagine why though, because original monster and Red Bull tastes like somebody drank battery acid, piss asparagus and sewage, then pissed it into a can for somebody to carbonate and drink. It was also around this time people were making some weird Shit. Energy shots like five hours, which takes all the fun out of slamming a Red Bull in 0 0.203 seconds with your friends. Energy drinks with nicotine in them, cause fuck it, why not? Or energy drinks like Four Loco that mix the two heaven juices together to get you even more fucked up beyond your senses. Now with the history out of the way, it's time for me to tell you all the wonders of caffeine. There's absolutely no downsides to it whatsoever. Remember that, kids. Caffeine in your standard cup of coffee is around 80 to 100 milligrams, depending on how good of a blend you have. Ra Red Bull has roughly 120 milligrams, depending on one of the 15 different can sizes that they have, and Monster clocks in at about 160. Then you got the cream of the crop, top shelf boof drinks like C4 or Ghost with a whopping 300 milligrams per can. 300 milligrams per can. <laughs> the FDA, or Federal Dick and Ass Administration, says 400 is the upper limit for adults, but fuck them, they don't work a job until 1 a.m. on a weekday, and then have to get up at fucking 6 a.m. for school. That's so fucking stupid. We need a better school system anyways. Yeah, oh yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, that's a pretty long run on sentence. I wonder how much longer I can go. <laughs> the early 2000s boom of energy drinks not only launched hundreds of other brands to capitalize on the new emerging market, but people were absolutely hooked on these things because you just couldn't get enough of them. It might be because caffeine is super addictive chemical and you can actually get withdrawal so bad you can permanently damage your brain, which is why all drinks come with a warning, caution, if you have a child in your stomach or are nursing said child, don't drink these. Also, if you're under 18, don't drink these. Well, that totally worked. Now, since caffeine is a stimulant and when mixed with other drugs, it normally doesn't end so well. Four Loco said, nah, we don't care, and added up to 14% alcohol with 150 milligrams of caffeine. People were going crazy for this shit, but not in the good way. The caffeine made people feel more alert than they thought, so they just kept chugging. This caused hundreds of people to go to the ER due to alcohol poisoning, and tragically, some even died because they went so far past their limits they couldn't tell due to the caffeine. After these reports, the Federal Dick and Balls Association told Four Loco, hey, listen, man, this is pretty fucked up stuff, okay? Either take out the caffeine or the alcohol, or we're gonna take you out. They ended up removing a good majority of the caffeine after that, and then no company ever decided to add alcohol to their drink again. Now there's some sobs out there. <laughs> Now there are some snobs out there, like myself, that adore coffee, and these just can't- <laughs> Fuck! Now there are some sobs out there. Fuck! <laughs> now there are some <laughs> Now there are some snobs out there, like myself, that adore coffee, and these cans just can't compete with a slow roasted cup of Congo slave beans. Well guess what baby, they have them too! The first I ever saw these were the iced Starbucks refreshers in the little glass cans, but now everyone and their mother has coffee flavored energy drinks. From Starbucks to Monster and even Bang, companies are filling every single corner of the market that they can get you to buy their version of heart palpitations and not the competitors. Now I don't know about y'all, but I love these things. I know they're not the greatest thing for you, but everything in moderation, right? And with how quickly and recent of a phenomenon energy drinks have become, thousands have tried to capitalize on it, millions have enjoyed the success of the ever-growing jitters in a can, and whether you're up till 4am gaming with your homies, or you have to wake up early and go to work, everyone can enjoy a nice little heart attack in an aluminum bottle. Now if you'll excuse me, it's 2 something in the morning and I really need to go to bed, because I have school in 4 hours. Unless. Never mind, all nighter baby, woo!